Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. Well, the weather not so hot outside of Miller Park, but of course that's not a big deal thanks to this spectacular retractable dome. So we're set to play baseball tonight. Game one of three between division rivals. The Reds wrapping up this lengthy road trip with a final stop to take on the Brewers. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. Now, the first half of the season for each of these teams, certainly not much to write home about. But both have been much, much better over the second half so far, Chris. Well, I think when you're rebuilding, and both these teams are rebuilding, that's what you're trying to do is to get better as years go on. And certainly as the season goes on, the Brewers and the Reds improved after the All-Star break. Uh, the Reds have an over 500 record. Their improvement in pitching has been remarkable, especially the bullpen for the Reds. Uh, the home runs by the Brewers, well, that's what they're doing here at home more than anybody right now. Chris Carter's a guy that you've got to watch right now. But the hot hitter in the Brewers lineup is Ryan Braun. We have seen that many, many years, especially when he pitches against or hits against Reds pitching. But Joey Votto now still swinging a very hot mm -hmm. bat. Probably one of the toughest outs in all of baseball. The guy trying to slow down Braun and the Brewers is Homer Bailey, who now makes his third start since coming off the disabled list. He was real good in San Diego. What did you think his last time uh, out? You know, sometimes, you know, when you come out and you are as electric as he was in his very first start against the Padres, you raise that bar of expectations so high that you realize, hey, this guy did miss a year and a half with Tommy John surgery and rehab, and it's going to be a bumpy ride up and down till he finally gets back to full strength. I don't think he's there yet. He didn't have the fastball. His fastball actually was down velocity a couple of notches between his first and second start. He did not finish his pitches. Let's hope his arm not barking uh, and that it's just something that normally happens to starting pitchers where you have good days and bad days. Meanwhile his opponent tonight is Jimmy Nelson who is really good to begin the year and their offense is hoping to carry him moving forward. Well the way he's pitched recently it's going to take a whole bunch of offense because he has not thrown the ball well at all. Uh, they've got a lot of offense going. Chris Carter as I mentioned has got a lot of home runs. They've got some young guys that you may not recognize their names like Orlando Arcia. Well, we're going to talk about those young players that are very good offensively, but they're going to need to score some runs because Jimmy Nelson has not been very good, at least since the All-Star break and even before that. So maybe the Reds are catching the Brewers and Nelson at the right time. All right, when we come back, we'll check in with Jim Day. He's standing by down near the Reds' dugout. The running game, perhaps a huge part of this series. You'll have that and more. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio.
Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. First of three, Miller Park here in Milwaukee. Reds and Brewers coming up. If you like stolen bases, you're going to love this series because both of these teams run and they feature the two top stolen base guys in the league. It's our IGS bringing the energy. Billy Hamilton, 48 steals, has taken over the lead from Jonathan VR, 45 steals. And look at these two teams, the Brewers, along with VR, they steal a lot, 123 stolen bases. That's the most in the major leagues. And the Reds second with 102 since the All-Star break. Billy Hamilton has turned up the wick, as has VR. 26 steals for Hamilton since the All-Star break. That's more than all but 26 of 29 teams in the league. VR, 14 stolen bases since the break. And the Brewers lead MLB with 46 since the All-Star game. Reds would like to get back to winning a series, and it starts tonight. They're looking to brew up a victory here against the Brew Crew here in Beer City. Reds and Milwaukee. Coming up, Tom Brenneman and Chris Welsh with all the play-by-play -play action. This season, each team winning five times. And really, that's been a trend. You go back over the last four years, and it's been a, a one game spread as far as a season series is concerned in each of the last three seasons. And five up, five down, going into game number 11 tonight. Let's take a look at Brian Price's starting lineup. Reds 46 up, 67 down. Hamilton, the league leader in stolen bases. Followed by Cozart and Vado. Duval in left field. Phillips back in the lineup at second base. And Shebler back in the lineup after getting hit on the cap. He's in right field. Suarez at third. Barnhart catching Homer Bailey. And on the mound. Boy, well, you talk about a Jekyll and Hyde year, Chris. That it has been in every sense of the word for Jimmy Nelson. Yeah, they expected, I believe, a little more consistency out of this 27-year-old. The he had a full season last year, Nelson did, in which he won 11, lost 13. This year he started off great, but lately, boy, oh boy, has he gone south. 6 and 11 is his overall record. Tonight making start number 67 of his major league career. Billy Hamilton, the batting average at 255. The on base percentage is at 310. He looks at a strike. And we know about all the damage he's capable of doing and has been doing. Once he gets on base, 
But that batting average on the rise in less than a month fits up over 20 points. It's been over a 300 batting in his last 22 games. It's not a full stretch position, but it's about as close to being one that's still called a windup. Yeah, it is. And nowadays, I think they call that more than anything else like a side saddle. Full windup. Uh, you're just trying to eliminate all the extra movement that you have that really lend to be it lend to inconsistency, bad control. I mean, those days of uh, oh, the Ross Ollendorf windup. You you may be seeing the last of a dinosaur right there. Two and two on Billy Hamilton leading off the game. And here is strike three called, says Bill Miller, the home plate umpire. Uh, nothing wrong with the arm of Jimmy Nelson as far as the velocity, that's for sure. He throws hard, low to mid 90s, but the control has been an issue for him. His walks have gone up, the number of strikes he throws have gone down, home runs have gone up. And what seems to happen with Nelson is that he might be cruising right along and then all of a sudden in one inning he'll give up a three run bomb. You, know, you talk about what he did early in the year. His first 11 starts he won five of them and had an ERA at two point eight. In fact during the month of May his ERA was two and a half. But since then the wheels have come off. Hozard pops it up to straightaway center. That'll be easy for Neuenheim. Two up, two down. Well, you see April to May, exactly what you were talking about, Tom. Greater and run average among the better pitchers in the league. And then when the wheels came off, they really went off. One and eight he has. And not only just one and eight, he's having a hard time, you know, really getting through the fifth inning. So what's happened with the Brewers is that every time that Nelson's pitched recently, they've been taxed on their bullpen. In fact, the last time as Nelson faces Votto with two down and none on ball one, the last time Nelson threw more than five innings, and he's only reached five innings once during the time frame, was when he shut out the Reds in seven innings on six hits all the way back on July the 16th. That's the last good start he had. Since then, he's given up four. Eight, six, and seven runs in consecutive starts. One and two to Joey Votto. Votto now on pace to lead the league in walks and on base percentage. Each would be for the fifth time in his nine full years in the major leagues. 18 home runs, 57 batted in. Still one and two. Should be noted that Votto has just 39 extra base hits. I mean, he's been knocking the cover off the ball. Second highest batting average, highest on base percentage in all of baseball since the end of May. But for the year, closing in on 400 at bats, 38 extra base hits for Votto. The doubles are down from where we're used to seeing them in the past. That was a check swing soft liner right at him. You're right, but it made, was made a lot softer by the fact that he had his glove with him. I think he's been doing some Joey Votto scouting because he was ready on, on the spot for that check swing. That earned a high five indeed. Well done. Three balls, two strikes. The 
Nuggets came out of the All Star break winning six consecutive series and now they have lost back to back series on this road trip to the Pirates and the Cardinals. A couple of series they could have easily won. Especially that Cardinal series where in game one they had the four nothing lead looked like Cody Reed would get his first major league win and in the the disastrous night. It was really unbelievable the way that happened. Those that hung around long enough to to watch that game were probably still in a state of disbelief. Reds are able to salvage one out of that series and maybe they can take a couple out of this series against the Brewers. Good at bat there by Joey draws a two out walk. Since we've last seen the Brewers, they traded away Jonathan Luke Roy, their closer Jeffress. They've moved VR over to third. Orlando Arcia is their number one prospect, and they brought him to the big leagues a little less than a week and a half ago. Arcia tonight playing in his 10th game. The ball drilled with the first pitch. So just like that, two out, none on, becomes two out, two on, due to the wildness you referred to from Nelson a while ago. And when it comes, it, or when he loses it, it seems to lose it in a hurry. I mean, he throws plenty hard. That fastball just got away from him right there. And, you know, what looked like was going to be possibly a one, two, three easy inning for Nelson. Now you've got a couple of runners on base. Brandon Phillips, who's been a very hot hitter at the plate, coming up. He's also been a wounded player. You may remember he initially injured that toe when we were here Memorial Day weekend. He ran into the wall along the first baseline. Since then he's broken a bone in his hand and most recently missed Wednesday's game with swelling bruising in his right quadriceps. Strike one. <laughs> Reds with two out action here in the top of the first inning. And Phillips, a base hit into center field. And you wonder what was Votto thinking about at second base. There's two outs in the inning, and when the ball left the bat, he broke back to the bag from which he came and has to stop at third base. That's just not knowing how many outs there are in the inning. Well, I mean, with two outs, I mean, you hear this from the time you first put on a baseball uniform and get on the field. With two outs, you're going at the crack of the bat. It doesn't matter if it's a line out or not. It just a brain hiccup. So you cross the Reds a run. We were really leaning on Phillips to try and pick up that two out hit. He gets it, and you don't score. So now you need another hit. As Scott Shebler settles in with the bases loaded and two outs. Breaking ball into a strike. That sort of play has happened to Votto. And for the Reds as a team for that matter. No one getting away from Maldonado, but the runners will stay put. But that has happened far too frequently this year for both Votto and many of his teammates. Well, you know, it's a matter of concentration. You ask yourself before every pitch, you know, what's the count? What's the score? What do I do if a ball is hit in different positions? This ball just simply didn't get for enough away from Maldonado. I mean, sometimes you see that on the part of a rookie. You just bring him up. Maybe he's a little nervous. Maybe he tries to do too much. But you shouldn't see that on a veteran that plays every day. It should be second nature. One ball, one strike on Shepard. And now one and two. But Jimmy Nelson really hasn't tried to fool the Reds at all here in this inning. He's known primarily just that four-seam fastball. And maybe that is the 
the order from the pitching coach on down to say all right early in the ball game we're just going to keep it nice and simple with you. He throws a curveball a slider and a changeup. Big opportunity here for Shepard. They appeal down to third. No says Tony Randazzo. Ryan Blakeney the umpire at second. Todd Tishenor is at first base and we told you the crew chief is a home plate umpire tonight in Bill Miller. Bases loaded in the Reds first inning. Two out walk to Votto. Duvall hit by a pitch. Phillips a single. And now the break even to Shevler. His ball three. Two pitch with the bases loaded and two outs. The runners get started. And Nelson has walked in a run. One nothing Reds thanks to a walk, a hit batter, a single, and another walk. And that's exactly what you talked about, Chris, from the very start of the broadcast. You know, if you look at Jimmy Nelson's numbers and really break the games down, you see the number of walks per nine inning. Well, even early in the year when he was winning those ball games of his first 11 back in April and May, he was still walking four batters a game, three out of every five starts. So eventually those numbers are going to catch up with you, and that's what's happened here, not only in the second half, but happened here with Nelson in the first inning. And Eugenio Suarez looks at the strike. You know, usually when a guy has some major league success and Nelson has had that and all of a sudden he really starts going wild one of two things happens either his mechanics are really bad all of a something's gone wrong or he's beginning to have some kind of an arm injury that keeps him from repeating even that breaking ball right there that slider that he throws at 88 miles an hour not much break on that just enough to maybe get Suarez off that fastball. O2 pitch and a fastball sinks down and in. Strike three call. Suarez not so sure. A scoring inning thanks to Nelson's wildness. Two walks, a hit batter. Suarez is still quite Grass. upset. He will finally turn and walk away. Reds take a 1 0 lead.
career. His father worked for the Brewers organization, finished his long playing career in a Brewers uniform. I remember he took over last season, about a month and a half in when Ron Renneke was let go. The starting lineup has VR moving over to third. We saw him at second base. RC at short, Braun in left. Jeanette at second, Carter at first, Perez in right. New and Ice, Maldonado, Nelson, a ladder third. Against a Reds 30 year old right hander from LaGrange, Texas, making his third start of the year, Homer Bailey. Well, he made only two starts last year, Homer Bailey did, 2015 in his career. This is start number 171. One good, one bad so far in the two that he has previously rolled out there. A couple of things to look for for Homer Bailey. Uh, at home as you're sitting on your couch watching this ball game. Number one, you know, you may want to watch the velocity on the on the radar gun reading, no question. First game he was out there, he touched 96. Last game he topped out at 94. Uh, and the other thing is to watch the length of his stride and if he's if you look like he's really finishing his pitches. That is the key as to whether he really feels healthy or not and to trust his arm. Dar having an excellent first Really full years in every day player. 45 stolen bases, second only in baseball to Billy Hamilton's 48. 305 hit. 28 doubles. And look at that on base percentage, up right at 390. Yeah, you, know, you talk to the scouts that have seen this Brewer team play, and he's one of the first names you bring up. The Brewers will have a decision to make what they want to do with him. We told you, you know, he's been a second baseman. They moved him over to third. And they're playing Arcia at short, Scooter Jeanette regularly at second base. Will third base be the long term answer for VR? A lot of people think so. He's only 25 years old. I like that shortcut though. I mean very quick swing on a fastball up. He tried to go down the left field line on the previous pitch. It looks like he is getting the idea of situational hitting where he changes his swing a little bit based on what the count is. Get the two strikes you short it up a little bit. We are getting his 10th start down to third since they moved him from short. That's when they brought up Arcia. Made 99 starts as a shortstop. Good breaking ball and didn't miss by much. Well, Bailey thought he had him there and it looked awfully good. You want to keep him off the base pass, no doubt. 45 stolen bases for VR. Just in, good call. But again, spoiling a lot of pitches. This is an eight pitch and back to start the bottom of the first inning. We got a very nice crowd here tonight on this uh, Friday night. And you got to remember the Green Bay Packers are playing up the road a piece in Green Bay, Wisconsin tonight. Granted, it's an you know, exhibition game and a preseason game, but. They've got like a 10 year wait list to get a season ticket for that franchise so it's pretty popular stuff when they play. That wait list might be longer than that. Three balls two strikes. And there is strike three. Fastball at 93 by Homer. Pretty good perseverance in this at bat by Bailey just kept coming right after him with different stuff. One interesting note about Bailey the first time he pitched he threw almost exclusively four seam fastballs last time out against the Pittsburgh Pirates not as good an outing but he mixed that two seam fastball and the four seam together the way that last one bit down and went straight down I wonder if that may have been the two seam variety. Here's Arcia. He has been the number one ranked prospect in their organization the last couple of years. They brought him up on August the 2nd. He's having a good year, Triple A. I mean, you, you wouldn't call it a, a monster year. He was a Pacific Coast League All Star. 
267 batting average. He does have 53 runs batted in, but you're playing at Colorado Springs. He had eight home runs. But they figure he'll be here a long, long time. Orlando Arcia. And Bailey just abused him in that at bat. Back to back strikeouts for Homer. Nice tight slider right there for Homer Bailey. Already he looks much better than he did in that second outing against Pittsburgh Pirates. He looked tentative in that outing. Didn't look like he wanted to get way out there and extend his arm towards home plate. He looks much freer here, and, and that's always a good sign. Ryan Braun, the batter, hitting at 325, 19 home runs, 58 runs batted in. On base percentage right at 390 for Braun. It's kind of like the last man standing of those Brewers teams who were pretty competitive teams there for a handful of years under Ron Renneke. Got to the playoffs a couple of times. But all those pieces around him have either been traded or retired in Aramis Ramirez, just as one example. Seems like a long time ago that when it was only 2011 that Ryan Braun was the National League MVP. Brewers, of course, that year had a very good year. Corey Hart was one of one of the outfielders out there. We have Prince Fielder in the lineup. They were good. One of your, your favorites of all time was out there sharing time with Carlos Gomez in his first year. Was uh, was it Tony Plush? Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? His real name? <laughs> Niger Morgan. Right. Bailey for barehanded. Ron runs well, but Homer able to take care of that. A very impressive start for Homer Bailey. Talk about pitching staffs getting it turned around starting with the All-Star break. I mean, the Cubs have just been off the charts, and they were before the break. But look at the Reds and the Brewers. Well, in the National League, the Reds and the Brewers have had the best differential, meaning earned run average before versus earned run average after. So big improvements from the Brewers, the Reds, and even the Cubs, like they needed to improve. I think their run differential now after they demolished the Cardinals this afternoon. Run differential, meaning how many runs you've given up versus how many you score, is plus 200, mm. which is simply lapping everybody else in baseball. And by the way, that win today for the Cubs, their 11th consecutive victory. 
they have cranked it up after a little bit of you know, lull for really about a month plus where they were a game or two under 500. Hard hit ball but very deep with a shift is Jeanette. And Barnhart thrown out to begin the second inning. Reds lead 1 0. I'll tell you with the way that Jimmy Nelson has had obvious control problems, I got to figure that the Reds will be absolutely as patient as possible, almost to the point of taking a strike. He hasn't shown a put away pitch, he hasn't shown the ability to throw four. Or three over the plate before he throws three outside the zone. <laughs> Obviously, Homer's taking at least one strike, and Nelson gets ahead of him. Haley, one of four the plate. Bare oh. handed play by Arcia, and that's a dandy by the youngster just brought up from the minor leagues, Orlando Arcia. Well, you talk about smooth as silk. Arcia, watch him take some ground balls before the ball game today. He didn't do any of that. I'm not so sure he had to barehand that ball, even though Homer Bailey was thinking about maybe an infield hit. That's a dandy play. And, and wouldn't you imagine that's the kind of thing that the Craig Council may say to him after a game is look, very flashy, great play, love to see it. Not a lot of guys can make that play, but. Save it for when you have to. Save it for when Billy Hamilton's running. Well, he's about it now. Two down and nobody on. It's when the Reds started their rally against Nelson in the first inning. Votto walked. Duvall hit by a pitch. Phillips singled. And then Nelson walked. Shevlin with the bases loaded after he got ahead in the at bat. Had one ball and two strikes. Wound up walking Shevlin. came up through the Brewer organization. He was drafted out of the University of Alabama. Second round 2010 by the Brewers and immediately became one of their top prospects. Mainly because he's a big burly hard throwing pitcher. But he's never really been able to harness his stuff meaning he's having command has always come very difficult for him. Back before he decided to go to Alabama the Reds had him on their list and drafted him in the 30th round when he was in high school. Instead he took that College scholarship. Two out walk to Billy Hamilton. That is four walks in the first inning and two thirds. Oh, excuse me. Uh, three walks and a hit by pitch. Mm -hmm. One way to keep the walks down. <laughs> Believe those old stories, you know, stories about the Bob Gibsons and the Stan Williams of the world and those guys where they really did try to drill somebody just so they wouldn't have to walk. Them. Do you believe that? I don't know if I would go that far. I do know that the, I do believe that they from time to time really wanted to drill somebody and they did it. Yeah. And we're watching Billy over there. There he goes. Unbelievable jump. And that was a really good throw. And they weren't going to throw him out. I mean, that was a great throw by Maldonado. Well, he's got one of the best arms of any receiver in baseball. I mean, he has an absolute gun back there. In fact, Billy, looking back, he can't believe it was as close as it actually was. Huge lead, big jump, throw on the money, and he's still there. Stolen base number 49 now for Billy Hamilton. Twenty two of his last twenty three for Hamilton and as you know this road trip. It's been a record setting road trip for Hamilton. You go back to Sunday in Pittsburgh and Monday and Tuesday in St. Louis. He had at least two stolen bases. 
in each of those three consecutive games to tie the modern franchise record. And there he goes again and not even a throw. So that is number 50 for Billy Hamilton. He's been thrown out six times all year long. Ninety five stolen bases those two fellows standing next to each other down at third base. Joe Morgan stole 50 or more in six consecutive years so it's three in a row now for Hamilton. Bob Besher also did that. Three and one to Kozak. continues to make the progress that he's made from last year through this year so far and, and more progress moving forward. It's terrifying for opponents on what he could do in terms of his stolen bases because you think of what a hard time Chris since he's come to the big leagues that he's had just getting on base yet he has 40 more stolen bases since he came to the big leagues than the next closest player in the big leagues, D. Gordon. Uh, he's a game changer, and all you have to do is listen to some of the broadcasters or the coaches of other teams when they watch Billy get on base and how he changes an inning. Now he came up and got on base in this inning with two outs, but you know, three pitches later, he's standing on third in a one run game. You know, he's the one guy the manager does not want to see come around. I mean, he's the kind of player that you put him on a playoff team, and he could be the difference. Mm -hmm. Three two. Good breaking ball by Nelson. The fan Kozar leaving Hamilton at third, who steals second and third. 50 on the year for running Billy Hamilton. Suarez, Cozart, Phillips, Votto, and the battery of Barnhart and Homer Bailey. Happy 31st birthday to Zach Cozart, and a little bit more on the birthday boy. He's passionate about animals. After baseball, he'd like to help out animals any way he can in shelters and zoos. His favorite go-to movies, Varsity Blues and Days of Thunder. His first car, a mid-90s Ford Explorer, and his guilty pleasure, Oreos. He says, sometimes oh, I'll sit down oh, with the idea you. that I'm going to eat four or five, and the next thing I know, a whole row is gone. They're so good, I can't stop. Now, now, would that come as a surprise to anybody who likes Oreos? 
None. 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 Like those uh, those UDF chocolate malts. You tell yourself, you know what, I'm not going to go get one tonight. Next thing you know, you're making that loud noise slurp in the last little bit of it. Uh-oh. Look at that, Mr. Welsh. That goes back to your old days. It just never gets old, does it? You blow a bubble, you put it on top of a rookie's cap, <laughs> and he becomes oblivious. And he's oblivious probably because he's paying attention to the game. In the center field, smoked in the center by Scooter Jeanette. First base runner of the game for Milwaukee. Reds lead 1-0. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Jim Day, how you doing tonight? We really didn't get a chance to say hello to you before the game, or at least not at length. Everything okay down there tonight? Doing well Good. tonight. Although I still can't believe they built Miller Park with no air conditioning. But it's a big old hang with them. See, it's funny because up here, not oh. only is there air conditioning, you could hang meat yeah, in this booth. I'm thinking about sending out for my sweater. Sorry, Jim. No, you don't have to apologize. Part of the gig, man. But it was cold in the booth. I got to admit, I walked in there and I'm like, wow. Well, they just did open one set of panels out in right center field. In left center field, they're not open. And although the temperature is about 10 degrees less than the, the sweltering heat right now in Cincinnati, the humidity is higher here. Yesterday, today, and slated for tomorrow, higher than it is in Cincinnati. Boy, it is really, really hot back on the home front. I know for many of you watching right now, you don't need to hear it from me. Chris Carter. Big swing and a miss. You know, we were talking about Hamilton running his way into the Reds' record books. How about the game the Brewers had yesterday in their 11 3 win against Atlanta? The first time ever in franchise history that the team accomplished the feat of scoring in every single inning. You go all the way back to 1900. It was only the 19th time a team has ever done it. Now, if you asked 100 baseball fans what occurrence is rarer, a perfect game or a team scoring in every inning, I would say 99 out of 100 would say, well, a perfect game, right? Sure. I mean, it's, it's so improbable. It never happens. Well, that even happens less. You know, their final inning yesterday, they had a runner at first with two outs. And, you know, that situation, your chance of scoring it percentage wise is very, very low. But Arcia hit a sinking line drive that Ender Enciarte tried to make a diving catch on, even with his team getting pounded in the bottom of the eighth inning. The ball got by him and went for a triple, allowing that run to score in their eighth and final at bat. Carter gone swinging. Three of those in a game for Homer Bailey. Two out. Or one out of the play. Now, with what Homer usually does when he gets up two strikes on a on a right-handed hitter, you're going to see sliders. If he gets up two strikes on a left-handed hitter, you're going to see, see that split finger fastball. That slider, boy, that looks just like a fastball coming out of his hand. Hard to lay off of. One hopper. They get one. Can they turn it on Hernan Perez? They do, and that'll end the inning. Nicely done by Phillips. Waiting on that soft lining. One nothing red at the end of two.
streaming sports service and delivers everything you've come to expect and so much more. It includes a free subscription to Advent Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Reds one. Jimmy Nelson and the Brewers nothing. Part of the order for the Reds here in the third. Votto, Duval, and Phillips. Joey drew a two-out walk in the first inning and wound up scoring the game's only run. Walking from third after a bases loaded pass to Scott Shevlin. to the left side and that's where VR was playing most of the year at shortstop that'll officially go third to first one out. Talking about you know, the Reds and their extra base hits totals, and I had talked about Votto throwing a lot of walks, very high on base percentage. His batting average has been through the roof for the better part of two and a half, nearly three full months. But Votto not collecting this year, so far anyway. There's you know, almost two full months left to go in the year, but only 39 extra base hits. Adam Duvall has 52. Well, they had an all-star first half. New ball did. When you looked around, looked for somebody to represent the Reds in San Diego for the all-star team. It was pretty much a no-brainer, although it did come down between New Ball and Jay Bruce. And that is a long one. Tack on another extra base hit as Duval hammers one way out of here. That's his 27th of the year. And it makes it 2-0 Cincinnati. Well, you talk about a great way to pay back. I mean, Jimmy Nelson didn't mean to drill him in the first inning, but it didn't take the pain away by knowing that it was an accident instead of intentional. I mean, he still has a welt somewhere on the left side of his body. But maybe this takes a little bit of the pain away when you center one, a hanging slider, and just go right down there, thigh high, bye bye. That's a long home run. So if you're wondering in the grand scheme of things that gives Duvall 53 extra base hits on the year and that puts him for the 10th most in the National League. The leader is Anthony Rizzo who has 62 and that was going into play today and you can pretty much figure he added to that total today in a 13 run outburst over the Cardinals. Arenado was 60. Daniel Murphy 59. Seeger with the Dodgers 56. And you have Freeman J. Bruce 55. Chris Bryant's on that list. And Carlos Gonzalez. Today the young man who's had a pretty nice year on a bad team is. Jake Lamb, young third baseman in Arizona. Brandon drops one into right center field to hit. He's two for two tonight.
I think there was a few people that were a little worried the other night when he came out of the ball game and it was his knee that caused him to sit the last game in St. Louis. Didn't want that to be a complication that would even add more pain to his lower half that had that toe that you mentioned earlier Tom that had been bothering him but boy two line drives and two at bats for Brandon so far tonight. One in one out one on. And here's Shubley. He drove the walk for the bases loaded in the first inning to put the Reds in front. and a glance over his left shoulder at Brandon Phillips one ball two strikes on Shepard and struck him out off speed puts away from him. And here comes Suarez who's perhaps still smarting from that call third strike to end the first inning with the bases loaded. Well he immediately reacted upon being called out and he threw his bat down. Here's the strike three he thought it was inside Bill Miller rings him up there goes the bat and Miller will point at him. And that's the move that an umpire will do when it means that you're being fined for throwing your equipment. And Suarez may have said, well, I wasn't throwing it because of the call. I was mad at me. But usually the umpire says it's too late. So they whip out their little book, they write it down, and you get a little notice from the league. Was that a call third, or did he say he went around on that check swing? Could you tell? I thought it was a call third, I did but too. it could have been called on the swing. Down and in pitch just like the one we just saw there, a little two seamer. Like most pitchers, Nelson and Bailey throw a four seamer and a two seam fastball. The two seam one is going to be down around the knees with a lot more run, and that is the primary pitch for Jimmy Nelson. And won the count on Suarez. Phillips running. Pitch taken. Throw down to second base. Man, does he have an arm. God Phillips really? lead it. And what a throw by Maldonado. From his knees. Well, the Brewers didn't want to trade Jonathan Lucroy. I mean, just for the sake of trading him. They knew he was going to be a free agent soon, and they wanted to make sure that they maximized his value. And they thought that they have in their backup. Martin Maldonado. I don't think he'll ever be the hitter that Luke Croy was, but boy, oh boy, behind the plate, you'll have a hard time finding a better arm and a catcher. Shades of Benito Santiago, the one time Red, long time Padre, among others. You know, if you watch a lot of the mannerisms of Martin Maldonado, he'll remind you a little bit of Yadier Molina. And that shouldn't be more than a it should be more than a little coincidence because they are very close friends. They are from the same town in Puerto Rico. And still to this day stay in touch very closely. So you'll see Maldonado doing a lot of the same mannerisms that does, you know, the Yachty does. And there's a two out flare. And a fall and a base hit and that'll bring in another run. So how about Phillips? I mean a bum toe. A bum quad and he gets into scoring position with two outs and scores on the base hit by Suarez three nothing. 
Well, a jam shot, one of those two seam fastballs that's running right inside. Suarez gets just enough. But you're right, all made possible by just superlative effort by Brandon Phillips. Guy's a ball player. There's no doubt about it, and I know you can get into debates on, you know, is he getting too old? Is he this? Is he that? Is he what he used to be? Hey, look, everybody gets old and everybody might lose a half a step, but, you know, his overall year so far this year, Chris, has been more than solid. And man, oh man, is he tough. He is tough. You know, he plays every day like he doesn't want to give anybody else a chance to get in there. You're right. Great point. So when they say, hey, do you, do you want a day off? He says, no. Well, do you want to ice your toe and we'll play it tomorrow? No. I'm good. I'm good. I'll play. And he's always there for Jim Day, too. Always there for Jim Day. Every day, Jim Day. Tucker hit the ball very sharply his first time up. And allowed one hopper to the second baseman. This time he lifts one to short left field. The Reds get a pair in the third. It started with a long one by Adam Duval, number 27. Suarez also drives in a run. Fireworks Fridays in the ballpark. Next one coming up August the 19th. Reds and the Dodgers, and you can be there for only $12. Don't miss a spectacular post-game fireworks show afterward. Presented by Trial 381 R-E-D-S or log on to Reds.com. Reds and the Dodgers. I told you it's a quirky sort of homestand coming up starting on Monday. Where you have back-to-back -back teams in for back-to-back four-game series. Marlins Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday they're in the hunt for a postseason spot and then you have the Dodgers a four gamer that rare Thursday Friday or is Friday Saturday Sunday Monday wraparound series they call it and then after an off day the Texas Rangers Leaders in the American League West come in for a two game set. Well, if they're going to give it to you, you may as well take it. And that's what Newen Heist does against a shift, a butt hit. You know, that's a danger of shifting a guy who's batting seventh in the order. 
because he may pull the ball all the time but when you give him an opportunity like you do right here down the left side of the infield. I mean he does the right thing in laying it down and then running. He'd, he'd probably take 200 of those. Well, he's right on the fringe of the big leagues right now. He's getting playing time tonight. But See, that's why I wouldn't shift a guy who's a fringe player. Right. I'm shifting on Jay Bruce and Joey Votto and Anthony Rizzo and, you know, guys who, first of all, have a resume and, second of all, have a little bit of an ego that they don't necessarily want to take it in certain circumstances. They're going to show you that they can hit it through the ship or over the ship. But when you're looking for playing time and you're seventh in the lineup as an outfielder, it's a great point. You're taking whatever you can get. Here's Maldonado, 213 batter. Five home runs, 11 runs batted in. New and high seat, stolen bases. He's been thrown out six times. He at one time was an up and comer with the Mets. They mm -hmm. had very high hopes that he would be an everyday outfielder for them. Well, it's funny, New York may be more so than any other place. I mean, you could go on and on and on <laughs> if you really were able to go through the memory banks of guys that on any given time, if you're broadcasting the Reds or you know the Reds go in to play the Mets through the years over the last 20, 30 years, where they have that guy that the fans fall in love with he's all the rage and he's going to be this and he's going to be that and then you know unfortunately a year or two later you'll see him on their third team. Mm -hmm. Now the first year that new and ice came up he batted 252 had seven home runs and 300 at bats but it was a way he started sure it. right and but the next year he fell off to buck 89. And now he's a career 225 hitter, but he's still in the big leagues. Off the end of the bat. Hamilton there, one out. That's a very strange team, Chris. The New York Mets, boy, they have such a hard time scoring, and now all of a sudden that vaunted pitching staff has taken its dings in the injury department and ineffectiveness. Noah Syndergaard really roughed up yesterday. Losing for the seventh time, the Mets are a 500 team. It, it seems like they're watching pickoff play here with Brandon Phillips. I mean, the Reds have run that enough, and of course, the Cardinals ran that on the Reds enough before the Reds finally figured it out. But you can see Brandon Phillips. I mean, he's on his way over here. To behind first base and he's sitting right there and if that throws all the money they're going to pick off new and ice at first base. So that, you know to follow up on that point about the Mets they just seem like a team that is only an injury or two away and it could be a frontline pitcher. They've already had their share that they just seem to on a verge of disintegrating. Hate to say it, but foul ball. And that's strike three to Nelson. You know, they made it, they made a pretty good run to close the gap between them and the Washington Nationals. And then it just not able to sustain. In fact, I think it was their manager, Terry Collins, that had a very terse remark in his post-game conference last night. Came in, they asked him one question. He gave a three minute response, got up and said, That's all I have to say. Then he went back into the clubhouse where his team was assembled, waiting for him, and he gave them a talk. And essentially, he said, I want guys in the games. I want them bringing their A game every at bat. And if they don't do it, we've got a whole team down there at AAA who want to be sitting in this, in this, this locker room right here. I mean, I was on the heels of getting swept. By the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team that has been reeling for the last two and a half, three months. And the Diamondbacks are knocking on the door to having the worst record in the league. They're right there in that 400 
winning percentage baseball category with you know, the Reds and these Brewers in San Diego just under 400 the worst record in the league is Atlanta. Two out for the Runner at first Reds lead three nothing we're in the last of the third inning. Had a nine pitch at bat in the first. And ended with Homer Bailey striking him out on the fastball looking. Foul off out of play, third base side, still one and two. You know, I know it's a stretch, but just looking at VR very quickly in the batter's box, the way he sets up his actual swing pass, and as short as it is, he reminds me a little bit of Robinson Cano. Now, I'm not putting him in the same category, you know, that he's going to be the type of player that Cano had turned out to be. But he's got a chance. He came over here after part time playing for three years with the Houston Astros. Traded for a minor league left hand right handed pitcher. Took something off there. Nice and nose dive away from him and Bailey picks up back to back strikeouts to end the inning. Five in the game for home with a three nothing lead. Cincinnati Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by your local Ford dealer Ford no further and by Cincinnati Children's changing the outcome together. Got a very nice handwritten note rare to get those in this day and age got a very nice one recently from the CEO over at Children's Hospital what a great job he does uh, Michael Fisher certainly appreciate his kind words good man great folks over there. One ball and one strike to Homer Bailey. Homer 
batting for the second time. He had a, a tapper over the mound his first time up. Boy, what a spectacularly athletic play from the young shortstop Arcia to throw him out. We brought up earlier I'm a little bit surprised maybe shouldn't be I mean Milwaukee's a big enough city to stand on its own and not worry about what else might be going on in the area but the fact that so many you know NFL preseason games are underway this weekend and the beloved Green Bay Packers are at home tonight at legendary Lambeau Field playing their first preseason game you may remember they couldn't play their schedule first hey. strike three because of what happened at the Hall of Fame game up in Canton when they painted the field and that paint turned into really like cement. They had to call off the game last weekend. But I brought up the wait list thing. Now, think about this for a minute. You mean the wait list for tickets? Season tickets. Okay. Okay. The waiting list for Green Bay Packers season ticket packages. They cut off the number at 50,000 on a wait list. 50,000. Now, if you figure 700 season ticket holders fall off per year, per year, safe at first as Billy Hamilton puts down a bunt. Boy, it didn't look like Nelson was in all that much of a hurry to try and get him. And the fastest man in the game beats it out. Uh, actually, more effective than a bunt is a swinging bunt because it freezes everybody. And Nelson just kind of winds up, takes way too long to get that big body of his in position to throw. And Billy Hamilton just outruns it. You know, that's one of those situations and examples of by being in the left handed batter's box for your step closer to first base helps Hamilton there. I'm. Just so happy that in the long run he decided along with the Reds not to drop being a switch hitter. Mm -hmm. All right so 700 people drop off a year. Right, but so it, it, they probably if 700 don't. no most they get did. willed and that kind of sure. thing. But if 700 dropped off that means you would be on the waiting list if you were at the tail end of that between 67 and 70 years. Waiting for a Green Bay Packers season ticket. So what do you do while you wait. It's a good question. Very good question. You go scalp or you go have a few just outside of Lambeau. And I want to tell you in Green Bay Wisconsin. For those of you out there if you have that kind of sports bucket list. And if you're a sports fan that's on the bucket list I mean, Yankee Stadium or Fenway in baseball maybe Wrigley Field. You know, basketball, maybe you know, Madison Square Garden, something along those lines. There goes Hamilton. He might go to third here. Nope, he slid into first. He didn't know the ball had popped out of Maldonado's mid. Third stolen base of the game for Billy Hamilton, giving him 51 now on the year. Uh, this is almost going to happen no matter what. Every time Billy Hamilton gets on base, he's going to steal at least second. Last year, Jimmy Nelson gave up 24 stolen bases. This year, he's given up. Three tonight. 21. He may get to 24 tonight if Hamilton uh -huh. keeps getting on. Because you got to believe in this at bat with one out, he would love to get to third for Kozar with one out in the inning. Well, they've got Scooter Jeanette, the second baseman, just kind of snugged over there towards second, just trying to make sure that Billy doesn't get too big of a lead. Running, check swing, and went around. Two in my one. opinion, the only defense a pitcher has, and Nelson, especially in this case, for Billy Hamilton not stealing, is that inside move to second base where you lift your leg up as if you're going home and then you swing it around backwards. So stealing third base for Billy Hamilton is really a 50 50 risk if Nelson shows the propensity to be able to do that inside move. 
and he should like that right there. And I, you know, I had a long conversation this afternoon in the Reds dugout with Jim Riggleman, former manager, and he believes that that's one move that will eventually, probably sooner than later, be banned from baseball. The same way they got rid of that third base fake move. Because it really doesn't add anything to the game, and all it really does is serve to deceive the runner. And I think people would think that a, a steal of third base is way more exciting than watching a pitcher inside move half a dozen times with a runner at second base. Two and two now on Kozai. Hamilton caught now in the one down. And they finally get it. He's out of the baseline. So Billy starts a little early and you just suggested it. You know, Nelson makes that spin move around and got him. Well, he, he had the inside move earlier in the at bat. And this time, the spin move, the, the more normal move. And Billy wasn't ready for that one. Took him a while. I bet he was pretty good in the backyard game of pick <laughs> You think? Yeah. Well, when you were a kid, wasn't that a great game? Oh. I never see anybody playing that anymore. Do you? No, I, I, you know, you're right. I hadn't never. thought about that. We played until dark every oh, night. Oh, man. What a great game. Swing and a miss, and that's all for the Reds in the fourth. A hit. Nobody left. Reds lead. 3 nothing. Mobile. What a start to a career for David Dahl. 17 game hitting streak ties the longest in MLB history to start a career and hasn't been done since 1941. Zach Britton, 39 consecutive scoreless appearances. Last run he allowed, you got to go way back to April. And Matt Holiday, a big blow for the Cardinals, fractured his right thumb when hit by a pitch in the 10th inning last night. Placed on the 15 day DL, he'll meet with a hand specialist on Monday. And the Cardinals just got pounded this afternoon. By the home run hitting Chicago Cubs. Well, that is a big blow indeed. You know, speaking of a, he talked about the start of the career for Dahl and, and Chuck Alano. Was the first player to break into the big leagues. His last major league appearance was as a Cincinnati Red in 1944. In fact, he made his major league debut with the Reds. He was from St. Louis, Missouri. His entire major league career. 
But it goes to show you, Chris, his career only lasted four years. Now, I don't have information to know whether or not that had a chance to, you know, whether it was an injury. But, I mean, you start a career like that and you're thinking going to be around for a while. Well, his, his career was over in four years. Mm. On swinging is Arcia. And Homer Bailey with a strikeout pitch working tonight. That is six of them in three and a third inning. Yeah, a lot of those strikeout pitches have been either the split finger fastball to left handers or that very tight slider he's throwing to right handers. That's what he's gotten Arcia on each of the first two times up. In fact, the first two batters in this order have been up four times and they've all had strikeouts. Two base runners, two hits. Given up by Homer Bailey. Here's Braun who tapped out to the pitcher. Ending a 1-2-3 opening inning. You know another reason you saw so many of those players who broke in and in 40 41 42 43 so many of those players whose careers weren't very long was because so many players were serving in World War II and came back at the end of the war to try and get their old baseball jobs back. When we were in San Diego a couple of weeks ago and well aware of the story knew Jerry Coleman relatively well certainly for a long period of time if nothing else but man, when you look back on his career as a fighter pilot and all the missions he flew mm -hmm. baseball player before he left and then he came back rounder down to Suarez two away in the inning the service of so many he didn't have to be a baseball player we always make it a point here on Fox Sports Ohio to thank all of those that have served are serving those that will serve for the United States of America and our U.S. military. Janetta clean single in the center field by far the hub most well struck ball against the pitching of Homer Bailey so far tonight. Nothing in two. It's his ball hard. And Billy Hamilton able to run it down and make a diving play to end the inning. Well, Hamilton doing it all tonight. What a road trip he has had. And to four. Three nothing Reds.
Saturday, August the 20th. Thanks to Toyota, the first 25,000 fans receive a USA Reds t-shirt. Show your USA pride. Reds and the Dodgers for 12 bucks. 381 R-E-D-S or visit Reds.com. All right. First of three. Reds and the Brewers. And the Reds with a 3 nothing lead. Joey Votto, the batter, has walked and grounded out sharply to the third baseman. VR is basically playing the shortstop position with the shift on Votto. like the last couple of pitches that Jimmy Nelson actually took a little bit off that fastball maybe to get a little more movement may be able to spot it up a little bit better both fastballs on the outside corner not at 94 but between 90 and 92. He's not walked about it the last two innings after walking three along with hitting a batter over the first two innings. You know, Nelson to me reminds me of a young man that his entire life he's probably bigger than everybody else on the team. He threw harder than anybody in the county and he just realized that I can throw hard and that's the way I'm going to get to the major leagues. But now that he's here you find out that 95 is hitting speed and you've got to be able to spot that fastball up and there are so many young men that are going to you know find that same you know challenge as they move forward. Because kids are throwing harder and harder every year now. I mean, you just look at what Homer Bailey has done just even tonight. I mean, he, he's had to use his whole variety of pitches his split finger fastball, his slider, his, his fast, his fat, both his fastballs. And he's throwing a very effective ball game by mixing them all up. Seven years old, like Nelson, I wouldn't say that the, it's imminent, but it's certainly about time that if he's going to be on this pitching staff going forward, that it's time that he turns a corner and shows the Brewers that he can that he can pitch rather than just throw. Otto fighting off that fastball in on his hands. That went in 93. Still two and two to Joey. I don't think there's anybody in the league that does that as well as no. there's just no question. Time Votto unable to get the bat on it, very upset with himself, and he's out on strikes to start this Reds fifth. Well, Nelson finally went to his secondary of secondary pitches, which is a curveball. I mean, he was fouling off all the fastballs, he was fouling off the changeups, he was fouling off the sliders, and the only one that he had not shown Votto to that point was the curve, took a little bit more off of it, had a nice downward break, perfect spot. Alex Rodriguez tonight is not going to run Chris uh, that's one of the big topics really it's the biggest topic in all the major league baseball on this Friday. He's playing his last game at Yankee Stadium tonight. 
the last game period. Oh that's true. That one is dumped into right field off the bat of Duval. So he's been hit by a pitch hit a solo home run and now a single into right field. I want to ask you Chris. When you look back on the career of Alex Rodriguez I mean only three players in the history of the game have hit more home runs in a run. It was later in his career when you know the stories broke about uh, the performance enhancing drugs. He was a part of all that. And you know the first thing people always do is they come back and say well a lot of guys were well you know we're just talking about one guy right now. But this is without a doubt even before all that came along this was one of the truly great players in the history of the game. Sure. Now how do you think this game remembers Alex Rodriguez when all is said and done. I know there's a lot to answer. Well there's a lot to remember too because as you mentioned I mean he's been in the big leagues for 22 years. He broke in at the age of 18 years old. So I mean when you're an all star almost every year of your major league career with the exception of maybe three or four. So he's probably been in the all star game around 18 times. You know, he's led the league in hitting. He's led the league in home runs. Whether he was tainted those years or not I don't know. But I, I think that unfortunately for Alex Rodriguez you're probably going to you're, you're, you tend to, to remember the negative more than you remember the positive and that's a shame. Well it is amazing the difference when you just think about uh, the way everything it ended for Derek Jeter. Mm -hmm. And you compare that to the way it's ending. Alex Rodriguez. Well, I think the main difference will be that Derek Jeter will be a, a first ballot Hall of Fame for sure. And that Alex Rodriguez, though his numbers are as deserving as anybody in the history of the game, will probably not get in immediately. Because there'll be some that say he's tainted. And why would you put Rodriguez in before you put Barry Bonds in? Not an easy decision, any way you look at it. But you know, I remember watching Alex Rodriguez when he was a high school kid. When he came up to play from down to Miami area, I think he went to Westminster High School. He went up to play a local high school where I was living at the time in Manatee County, Florida. And he looked like a big leaguer among high school kids then. Sure. I mean, it was amazing how I said, "Well, there's the big leaguer." As soon as he got off the bus. Line ball into right center field. You know, I read a very interesting article today that made one of the a point that it makes you think about it a little bit. There are two other players that are going out this year that, in many circles, are beloved around the game that had a history with PED. Mm -hmm. You're right. In David Ortiz. And I mean this is a love affair going on his last game all over America and people are falling all over themselves to praise Bartolo Colon. It's just I don't know if you, know, you can be given a hundred reasons why and people could go go back and document through the years but it's uh, there's just a lot of people that just come that have come to dislike Rodriguez over the course of his career and I don't know if that's because he was blessed with that kind of talent you were talking about that was just superhuman or he was given the kind of money that people thought was obscene mm -hmm. before the rest of the league ended up getting that type of money. Mm -hmm. But you're right about uh, Cologne it seems like he gets a free pass and certainly big poppy. I mean no one ever wants to mention it but he failed a drug test back in what 2004 I believe. It was. And, and none of that should have come out. I mean that's when the you know the players association and the, and the league had agreed they were going to you know figure out really what was the state of the game in relation to that and somehow some way came out which was not good for anybody especially guys like Ortiz and the game itself but it did come out. Three and one on Scott Shepler.
Runner goes and hooked to the right side. Jeanette will throw out Shevlin. The Reds are finished in the fifth. They lead 3-0. Baseball as the MLB on FS1 brings you the Pirates versus the Dodgers starting at 3.30. Then at 6.30, flip over to Fox Sports Ohio. The Reds live. Second game of the series between the Brewers and Reds will be on tap. Watch both games live on Fox Sports Go. Homer Bailey starts his fifth inning of work against Chris Carter. Now, there are a few guys in the game that can stop both teams dead in their tracks before the game or anyone on the field. Chris Carter did just that. He had a fungo bat before today's game, and he was flipping balls up and hitting them by the Brewers dugout, which is down the first baseline, and hitting them into the upper deck in left field. It was an amazing, amazing thing to watch, and everyone, I mean everyone on the field, stopped to watch. Well, really, Jim, the interesting part about that is it didn't look that amazing until some of the other Brewers grabbed the fungo bat and they tried it themselves and they had a hard time hitting it out of the ballpark when he was just what looked like half swings popping it up into the upper deck. Well, this is an unbelievably strong man. And he's a guy who's very dangerous here at Miller Park. In fact he's got 20 home runs here at home. Which is number one in all the major leagues for home runs at your home ballpark. Short swing. Dangerous on a hanging pitch. Over Bailey working on a two hit shutout. He has struck out six, not walked a batter. This is his third start since coming all the way back from Tommy John surgery. When he came back in San Diego, it was his first start since April the 23rd of last season. Made only two starts. All of last year. But heck, you go back to August 2014. They had to shut him down because he had that torn flexor mass tendon, which required surgery from Dr. Timothy Kremchek as well. Three and two on Carter. Now Carter will hit the home run, but also strike out. He struck out once tonight, came into the ball game tonight, leading the league. With 145 punch outs. He led the league a couple of years ago when he was with the Astros, and struck out 212 times. Ball four. Homer had that one get away from him. First time that's happened tonight, a walk given up by Bailey. Well, he missed, but he didn't miss by much. Uh, 
But if you saw the radar gun reading on that pitch at 96 miles an hour, Homer feeling obviously a whole lot better tonight than he did his last start in Pittsburgh. And you really can't expect Bailey to be back in midseason form until sometime next year. I've never been through Tommy John surgery, but all, everything I've read, and there have been plenty of books out there and essays written about it and diaries and so on. I mean, you go through a time when you first come back where you're still trying to trust your arm. You're hoping that it doesn't fall apart. And every little twinge you feel, every pain, every dull ache, you're wondering if there's something going on. Lead off man aboard. Second time, third time now in the front five innings. The Brewers have put the first batter in an inning on base. It happened with Jeanette in the second. Double play ball ended that inning. Neuenheis a bunt hit to start the third. Bailey retired three in a row. And now the walk to Carter. And here's Hernan Perez. Fastball up middle late, even the count of ball and a strike. Perez had proverbial jack of all trades. We talked about him when we were here over Memorial Day weekend. Craig Council really likes Perez and especially his versatility, and that's expanded even more so far this year. He's made 31 appearances as a third baseman. One game at short, a game at second. We've seen him at those two positions a lot more over the last year plus but prior to this year he had never started a game in the outfield and tonight is his 21st start in right field two and two take a look at those numbers for Perez since the all-star break slugging percentage up over 550. And a batting average of nearly 340. He was a Brewers player of the month in July. And that was just about a year to the day after he was picked up off the waiver wire from the Detroit Tigers by the Brewers. I mean, the Brewers made a, a waiver claim, really not expecting to get this type of production out of that, but you just never know when something like that's going to pay off. You know, very similar to what the Reds have gotten in return for Dan Straley. What a find he's proven to be. You see Straley. One man's junk, another man's treasure. That's right. See him here tomorrow night. Hunting for his eighth win against right hander Zach Davies. And Cody Reed, who should have picked up his first major league win in St. Louis, he'll shoot forward again Sunday afternoon against the right hander Willie Peralta. Start an hour earlier tomorrow night. It'll be a normal, if you will, Eastern time zone start tomorrow. We'll be on the air at 6.30 with the Reds live. Broken back flare into short center. Hamilton can't get this one. Had a diving plate in the fourth inning. And now for the first time, the Brewers have some action with two on and nobody out. Pretty good pitch by Homer Bailey got it down in the end of the bat and not hard enough to get out there to center field for Hamilton to field it on a fly. So they have a couple of runners on nobody out. The good news is you're down towards the bottom of the Brewer order. And Newenwy, Newenheis, who laid that bunt down the third baseline his first time up comes up. There'll be no shift this time. are not so sure that they're not going to have Neuenheis put down a bunt. There is action in the Brewers bullpen. So perhaps they would consider batting for Nelson despite it being just the last of the fifth inning. Reds have scored three runs six hits against Nelson so far tonight. Well with Neuenheis' speed I mean if he's going to bunt he ought to lay it down the first baseline. The Reds are playing deep on the right side of the infield very deep.
beautiful breaking ball there catches the outside edge one and one. Or it took a little off. Well I, yeah I, I don't know if that was a splitter or if it, he just did take a little bit off that pitch could have been a slider. Didn't have that normal arc or tilt that you see on a slider. And that last pitch though at 88 miles an hour almost guaranteed to be a splitter. In fact, you know, you can look this up, so I'm not giving away any trade secrets by the Reds, but I did notice today when I was doing a little pregame research that when Homer Bailey gets ahead of a left-handed hitter, you got a 71% chance you're gonna see that splitter. And, and that, especially when you get two strikes on you. So I would imagine that's what Neuenheis will have to negotiate here at some point. Although he's going to get a fastball in here first. Still a ball and two strikes. Strike three called on the outside corner and 95 mile per hour fastball seventh strikeout for Homer Bailey or Homer's control tonight has been very good just nibbling at the bottom part of the strike zone. Look at this last one number six. That's the kind of pitch right there if you're Homer Bailey you pick that pitch and you maybe pick another half a dozen pitches that are executed perfectly. That end up with good results, and you put them on a little bit of a loop, a loop tape, or on your little hard drive, and you watch that about two minutes a day. And it re emphasizes everything that is good about your delivery and about how you get good results when you throw good pitches and so on. Because the first thing most people do when they look at video is they, they want to pick out all the bad stuff. That's about as good as he can throw a pitch right there at that 95 or 96 on the black. So we brought up earlier that Bailey's second and what would be final start of last season came on the 23rd of April. Coincidentally, that was here at Miller Park. Gave up two runs, seven hits, and five and two thirds innings. Reds lost that game four to two. Bailey did not get a decision. He's never had much success against the Brewers. He started against them more than any other team in his major league career. Tonight is 22nd career start. He is four and eight. The team is nine and twelve. And Bailey's earned run average is almost five runs surrendered per nine. Two one to Maldonado. He had a pitch to hit there and fouled it straight back. Maldonado fly to center. His first time up. Pitcher spot due up next, although a body that is not that of Jimmy Nelson stands in the on deck circle. That is Andy Wilkins.
Steals to a two. Straight up into the air. Infield fly rule handled by Phillips, second out of the inning. I'd like to remind you, coming up later, we'll have our Miller Time moment brought to you by Miller Light. As Andy Wilkins will come on and bat for Nelson, who still has not gone beyond five innings since he. Shut out the Reds over seven innings in the middle of July. Mac Jenkins out for a quick visit and the obligatory visit when you have a pinch hitter. I think this is one that this is one of those visits that they can get rid of. I mean. You get a pinch hitter up there. You're going to go over the scouting report. Mac checks the book before he goes out. This is nothing against Mac Jenkins individually. I mean, we see every pitching coach do it. Go out there and tell him what this guy hits. Well, if he could hit, he wouldn't be coming off the bench. What happened with, you know, hard in, soft away? Hard up, soft down. Soft stuff early, hard stuff late. So Wilkins about it in from the left side. Been up and down over the last couple of years at the major league level. He has one hit in 15 pinch hit and bats this year. The one hit, a home run. Well, it looks like a pretty good pitch. Instead, it's too low. Or so says Bill Miller, two balls and no strikes. So Wilkins batting four, Nelson, five innings of six hit, three run baseball here tonight. Very wild in the first two innings of this game, and it hurt him. He walked two, one with the bases loaded, and hit a batter when the Reds scored in the first inning. He did not walk a batter over his final three. That pitch a moment ago, and, and, and I have no way of knowing this for sure, but that's the one thing. When a position player, a regular player who's been playing in the game, takes a 2 0 fastball with two on and two out in an inning right down the middle, okay. He's seen the pitcher, maybe wants to get a little better look at him, you get it. Guy coming off the bench gets into a 2 0 count. The last guy in the world Bailey wants to face after Ryan Braun in this lineup is VR. And he took the best pitch of the at bat right down the middle. And Bailey says, Thank you. Eight strikeouts for Homer Bailey.
Guts to say it. That's the story on both Colin Cowherd and Jason Whitlock. Catch Colin and Jason on FS1's new daily sports talk show, Speak for Yourself, weeknight at 6 p.m. Eastern on FS1. Blaine Boyer been around a long time, Mr. Welch. Well, broke in when he was 23 years old with the Atlanta Braves, the team that drafted him out of Marietta, Georgia. So he's a hometown boy, pitching for the Braves back in 2005. This is game number 378 for Boyer. Every one of those appearances as a reliever. You know, it's funny, I remember when he came up another local kid as you mentioned and right around that same time frame they had also signed and brought in rising all the way to the major league ranks both Brian McCann and Jeff Francoeur local guys yep. and all you read about for a year and a half was boy the Braves a scout Georgia better than anybody and what since Jason Hayward I haven't heard of anybody else. Well, I'm sure are, there I'm, I'm are sure one there are or two plenty. other guys. Yeah, you know least, what I'm saying, yeah. though. I mean, they, they made it out like it was some kind of state secret that uh, that nobody else was scouting Atlanta. Well, if you're a scout, though, an amateur baseball scout, and go nowhere, if you want to sit in one city and see as many top players as you can, Atlanta's probably the place to go because not only do they have their homegrown players from there, a lot of good ones, but and it's also the site of so many travel team tournaments. Mm -hmm. East Cobb, you've heard about them for years and years, but I mean there are hundreds of teams every year that go in there, and dozens of teams of draft eligible and you know draft age sure. young men that uh, will play. You're going to get your eyes full. The problem is getting back and forth from different parts of Atlanta by car is a challenge. Could be a challenge here in Wisconsin. Broken bat roller to the shortstop. I drove yesterday on our day off, Tom, up to Madison, Wisconsin, to see my daughter Carrie. About yes. an hour and a half drive, no, no big deal. But somebody told me before I left, he said, "You know, you know the two seasons in Wisconsin." And I said, "No, what are the two seasons of Wisconsin?" He said, "Well, there's winter and there's construction." And you found it. I found the latter. The latter. I'm sure there are other places in the United States that get colder. There's no doubt about that. I mean, if you've been to Minnesota, Maine, perhaps. I'm sure you get up into the Dakotas and Idaho and Alaska. Well, of course. But in the continental. But I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> they can't be that much colder than here in the world. And it, it stays cold for a while, too. But they, they're used to it here. It's a hardy breed lives up here. They're tough. They sit in the center field by Barnhart. I remember doing a game in Green Bay the last weekend of the NFL season a couple of years ago. And unlike baseball, you know, we come walking in the booth. We do all our work here before a game because, you know, generally it's comfortable. I remember walking in the booth about three and a half hours before the game. Open booth, right? Yeah, open booth had uh, everything I, I, that I brought with me had it on because I like to go in the booth on the really cold days, a couple of hours before the game, and just kind of get a feel for what it's like for maybe about 20 minutes and then get out of there if it's really, really cold. That day in Green Bay, I was sitting there for maybe a minute and a half, and I put my head in my hands. And I asked the Lord above, how in the world are we going to get through this? <laughs> I mean, it was beyond description how cold it was. We, we made it. You know, the guys on the crew, God bless them, you know, the guys in the booth, you know, they, they, they want to stay warm too. So they're, they're bringing their heaters from home. Some of the guys are guys that are traveling with us. <laughs> hey, is it warming up up there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh boy. One and one account on Bailey. 
And he bunts it foul for strike two. Homer does not have a sacrifice. Since coming off the disabled list, he is one for six as a bat. Ball and two strikes. Very short lead by Tucker. And bunted straight in the air out number two. I got a text of a buddy of mine, Chris, to finish that thought about the game in Green Bay, and I I knew at least one of my buddies would be watching. About seven of them came with me for that final game. And they sat in the stands. They I sat in the stands, but I told them I would not give them the tickets unless Brian Billick and I went to shoot our open, which we did, where they do the Lambo leap sitting uh -huh. on the edge of the stands. And so the gates weren't open when we wanted to do it. So I told him, I said, look, I'll get you sideline passes. They already had tickets to the game. I'll get you sideline passes. But you have to act like you're from Green Bay, take off your shirts, and sit <laughs> around all of us like you're hardcore while we tape the open. So I wasn't very nice to my friends. They still remind me of that regularly. And when their wives saw them on television later that day, they were not very happy. Well, maybe they had prepared and weren't feeling any pain at the time. Strong possibility. Preparation is everything. No doubt. <laughs> oh, and one to Billy. He's had a nice game. He's had a nice several games in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, the change in Billy Hamilton, it seems like it's happened overnight, but it's really a culmination of a lot of things. Jim Days mentioned during the series when we were in St. Louis about how Joey Votto is taking him in the batting cage. And he's listening to the interaction going on between Votto and the hitting coach Don Long, and he's getting into the routine, and he's beginning to understand a lot more about what goes into being a big league hitter. But it, it's, it's that, plus it's the hours of work that he has put in in the offseason. This last season with Billy Hatcher nearly every day Billy moved to Cincinnati down to the stadium they go and they're in the in the batting cage and they're working on things and learning a lot from that guy at third base I'll tell you that guy's like an encyclopedia of baseball knowledge and the years before Delano to Shields I mean it all it builds a little bit at a time and hopefully you're beginning to see the breakthrough. It's funny when you have somebody around for a long time. Frequently we take them for granted. Billy Hatcher has been around for a long time and I think sometimes it's taken for granted. Mm -hmm. He's really good at his job. Well, he's got to work this year over third base. You know, we always kidded him in the last few years about you know first base. For the most part you're holding guys you know. Protective equipment. Somebody has an elbow pad or an ankle pad. You're putting that in your pocket. Your special batting gloves. You got to remember Billy's little running protection glove that he has on his hand. But at third base, you're in charge of a lot of stuff. You're relaying signs from the manager. You're making sure that the hitters get them. You're making sure you look at the guy at the first base. Make sure he gets the signs. Hamilton called out on strikes. And a throw down to second doesn't matter because that's a third out of the inning. Reds lead, three nothing.
All righty, fellas. Nice to hear Ken Griffey Jr. back in his hometown and hanging out. I'm sure those kids were just thrilled to have a chance to hear some words of encouragement from Ken Griffey Jr., one of the game's all-time greats. What a beautiful job he did at this year's ceremony. Very emotional speech for Jr. going into the Hall of Fame. Tell you another guy that went in this year, one of my all-time favorite guys, just as a guy that ever put on a baseball uniform was Mike Piazza. Mm -hmm. First class top shelf guy. <laughs> Beginning now for Homer Bailey. He has a 3 0 lead. It's the third time through the batting order. Through the front five, he's walked one, allowed three hits, struck out eight. Top of the order, VR, Arcia, and then Braun. Well, Homer looks much, I guess, more comfortable tonight. He also looks like he's getting more extension and really firing to the plate much better than he did against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Early on, when we mentioned, all right, what do you look for with Homer Bailey tonight? Number one, you look for velocity because that is a, a quantitative way that you can immediately tell sometimes how a guy feels. The other is how much extension are you getting? And he's getting good extension on all of his pitches. Let's take a look at a comparison now between Homer Bailey's tonight, his delivery, and what he did against Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates on your right, his last start. And it's going to be a very subtle difference, and you may or may not be able to pick it up. But when he lands his left foot, you know, that tells me how much stride length he has. And, and it, it's, it's slightly more on the left. He's getting more extension towards home. His arm is in a better position. And he just overall looks better tonight as a big league pitcher than he did in Pittsburgh. He just looked a little tentative, cutting off everything a little bit short. So, again, you know, changes like that are so subtle. Sometimes if you're not used to looking for them, you don't see them. But the results tonight speak for themselves. Well, he's had everything working tonight. He's had a fastball sometimes upwards of 95 plus miles per hour. He's had the splitter. We've seen the slider, and he's had a very good curveball when he's thrown it. Reds have, it appears, made the decision that this is going to be Bailey's final inning. There's already action in the Reds' bullpen. You may remember before the first game in San Diego. Ryan Price had said before that game, six innings would be great. Bailey came within one out of six innings. Remember in that game, he walked three batters in a row in his final inning after not walking a batter through the front five and a third. I think he just ran out of gas in that inning, too. And that is his tenth strikeout of the game. Now, Barnhart wants it up out of the zone, and that's exactly where it goes. And the young man. Orlando Arcia chases it and it's for a three, a three strikeout night for him. In fact, the first two batters in this order, VR and Arcia, have struck out six times in six at bats. It's an odd pronunciation, that young man, the shortstop. You know, naturally, whenever you see a, a Latin name, with the A R C I A, your first inclination, and it certainly was mine, having not seen this young man in person, is it Arcia? And we were quickly uh, told before the game that his is pronounced differently Arcia. Nothing in one on Ryan Braun. He's tapped out to the mound and grounded to third. Bailey trying to finish him off. That was pitch number 100 on the night for Homer Bailey. And out away from six shutout innings, he's fanned as many batters in the game tonight in five and two-thirds innings as he had 
in eight and two thirds innings, spanning two starts. Welcome back, Homer Bailey. He fans the side in the sixth inning. 11 strikeouts for Homer. Six shutout frames. District rooftop of the ballpark for only $15 you get general admission seating to it access to the exclusive rooftop patio plus your first ring is on us visit reds.com slash district that is a cool spot Homer Bailey second most strikeouts in a game in his major league career he had 12 of them on that July 21st night 2013 11 in six innings Chris here tonight what an outing by Bailey and clearly his night is over. I don't think he could have ever expected to have this kind of an outing so quickly after coming back but uh, obviously his arm feels good but what is so impressive is his command. I mean the throwing 96 miles an hour but spotting it up exactly where he wanted it. Boy, that's really a good sign for the Reds. Reds lead three nothing as they come to bat here in the top of the seventh inning and that one jerked foul. Jan Mariñez takes over on the mound for Blaine Boyer. Jan Mariñez. Yesterday, a scoreless eighth inning came over from Tampa Bay in the middle of May for money. Traded oh, for cash. Having a big day today because he's getting a pitch on his birthday. Turns 28 today. Originally signed by the Marlins, he was traded from the Marlins to the White Sox. Then signed as a free agent with the Tigers, the Dodgers. Rays signed again as a free agent with the Rays, and I don't mean to interrupt you here, by the Marlins. But you just said it's his birthday today. Yeah. Guess who else's birthday it is? The Here's. man he just got out. Zach Koza. Well, how did we not know that? Well, we did. We got to it before he okay. grounded out. Well, happy ground out, Zach. <laughs> Hitless night for Cozart on his birthday. Zach turns 31 today. 
Happy birthday. Otto first pitch swinging drives one into right center field. That'll be a base hit. Joey has his first hit in three at bats. He's also walking, scored a run. Votto had seen 23 pitches in his prior three at bats combined. That was nearly 21% of the pitches thrown by Jimmy Nelson in the game. And what you know at this time, he goes up there, first pitch hacking, and gets his first hit of the night. There's a missile off the bat of Duvall to left field. A perfect night for Adam. Hit by a pitch, hit a home run, and now a pair of singles. That was impressive about his night. Obviously, it's a perfect night, but the fact that he had a base hit to right field his last time up. He's not up there just trying to rip the ball to left field every time. He went through a little bit of a funk himself there. We had a hard time finding his way to first base. And it seems like tonight anyway he's swinging his way right out of that. He's been right around a 200 batter for the better part of a month. After that monster start which urged him to trip to the all star game. Here's Brandon ball one. Brandon two of three a pair of singles a stolen base and a score to run. Was a very important stolen base for Phillips in that third inning. Had a one out single after the home run by Duvall, stole second, and was able to score on the two out single by Suarez to make it a three nothing game. That's where we are. Reds trying to add to it in the seventh. Two one on Brandon and on the right field line. Tough play here, and that is a fair, fair ball. ball. Bounces into the stands for a ground rule double. So that'll be a run scoring double by Brandon. Botto scores to make it four nothing, and Duvall on to third. As soon as it left the back, you knew if it stayed online, 
without that little slice to it. And this was going to be trouble for Perez. Pretty good pitch right there. Brandon's not sure if it's going to stay fair or not, and it barely does. Taking a look at that from the video room and wondering if maybe they had asked for a review. It's Pat Murphy, the bench coach under Craig Council. Interesting to know that Pat Murphy was Craig Council's college coach when Council played collegiately at Notre Dame. Murphy managed the Padres for a little while. That was last year after they fired Bud Black. So the attentional walk will be given to Shebler and they'll load him up for Suarez. Well, a good night for the Reds overall. They're up four nothing, and a good night for the folks that got on a bus. The Rosy Reds, Reds Rooters, the Rosy Reds, I guess here tonight. Mm -hmm. And there they are, all grouped together. It's about a seven-hour bus ride, I guess, when you hop on it in Cincinnati. And well, what a great organization for a long time. They love their red legs. They sure do. And they have several trips a year. We've, we've seen them, I think, this year already down in Atlanta. We've seen them here in Milwaukee. I think we see them in Chicago oftentimes. They'll be ready to party after the game, Tom. You hope you're up for it tonight. Ready to roll, been a while. Maybe we all go somewhere, a little karaoke or something. That'd be right up your alley. Mm -hmm. You know, go back, I saw where uh, Paul Lanka was the surprise singer at the NFL Hall of Fame induction ceremony wow. last weekend. And uh, maybe we'll uh, turn back the clock and karaoke with Paul Anka tonight. Well, That's pulled foul. If that doesn't work, uh, Pat Benatar, I think, performed here uh, at the State Fair, right here, held in Milwaukee, and she was staying at the hotel really? last night, from what I understand. And did you see her? I did not. It was only a rumor that she was. I saw her bus. I think it was. They Say said what it was now? their bus. When, when we were younger. Oh yeah, he was looking good. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, everybody out there, you know, in their 50s right now. Come on now. Gentlemen, I can confirm she was there. I ate lunch right by her. And, 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 and uh, you know, look, I, I'm not trying to turn this into a sexist kind of thing, Jim, but, but I mean, does she, does she still look look good? I mean, you know, it's been a long time. I haven't seen her in 20 years. It's a ground ball down to third, and everybody is safe. That'll be an error. I would assume that's got to be an error on the third baseman VR. And that uh, makes it five nothing. Looks like he's going to field it, and it just looks like it comes up on him a little bit. And when he was originally going to field that, looks like he was going to come home with that. It wasn't hit very hard. He didn't think he was going to have a chance to get two, and he got none. And Reds have a chance now to blow this thing wide open. So five nothing they're loaded for Tucker Barnhart the Reds are going to hit for Bailey anyway. What do I do with it. Pitcher throws it home they get one out instead of what should have been two. So another out given to the Reds here in the inning they're still loaded. And who's going to back. Is that Yvonne De Jesus Junior. Phillips cut down on the force out at home. Well, with a catcher running, that's a Taylor May double play. Uh, he he could have gone to second and got the double play. And if he had thought of it first, he could have gone to home and get the double play. But by looking to second and then looking to home and then deciding, he's only going to get one out out of it. Jim. Jim Day. Quick visit to the mound here. Yes, sir, Tom. We're waiting. 
Well, I didn't want to interrupt the action. I'm a little biased because when I was younger, that hit me with your best shot video. Oh, was, man. I mean, no yeah. doubt. Hey, no doubt. She's 63 years of age now. Okay, 63. Wow, okay. And still looking good. That's great. Good for her. Good to hear she's still out on the road and uh, performing and doing well. I believe she came through Cincinnati already this summer or, or will be coming through Cincinnati this summer. They've got some of the that sort of era groups passing through right now down at Riverbend. They got Don Henley coming in pretty soon. Base is loaded for Yvonne De Jesus Jr. Tell you what's a good show. It's going to be next week. We're going to be working, but man, I think it'd be a pretty good show. It's Boss Skaggs oh, yeah. and Michael McDonald. It's a pretty good uh, traveling duo there. One to De Jesus. Quick throw down to second. And dropping the ball is Arcia, or the runner would have easily been picked off. We already talked about Maldonado's arm earlier tonight. It is a cannon. Well, this was a prearranged play, obviously, with Arcia right there and just wasn't able to handle the, the play with the runner coming in at the same time. Just a quick little short hop, but an easy hop. Through the left side in the left field of base hit. This will score two more, and the Reds have indeed kicked in the door. It is seven nothing here in the seventh inning. Pinch hit two run single by Yvonne De Jesus Jr. You know, after a really bad start, De Jesus has played excellent baseball. He has not been called on to start all that many games, but he did start a couple of games at shortstop last week. In Cincinnati, I guess it was more than a week ago now, but played some very good defense for the Reds. He's come through a lot as a pinch hitter. He's a young man that's really kind of rejuvenated his career, without a doubt, here in Cincinnati. You know, he had cups of coffee, a couple of places, and really wasn't going anywhere. It didn't look like the stick. And then you come into spring training as a non-roster player, and at that point, you're kind of hanging on by a thread. And you get an opportunity you better take advantage of it. He's done that. Well you know the other thing you like that he did was Chris is, is when he came to spring training last year not this year. He was one of the best players on the team. Mm -hmm. But he did not make the roster you may remember. Leaving Arizona. Didn't hang his head did not demand you know let me go somewhere else and try and find a job. Cleared waivers was sent down to Louisville. And had a really nice year down there before they finally brought him up, and he was a valuable member of this team a season ago. Even in a down year, he was still an important player, and he's been with them from the get-go this year. That was when he was really battling for a position with Christopher Negron, and Negron got the nod. Negron, I think, has moved on to the Cubs organization. One and two on Billy. 
It's the third time Hamilton has looked at strike three in a game tonight. Reds send nine to the plate, four score, seven, nothing. They stand and stretch in Miller Park. I'm Jim Day. You know the old saying, if you watch baseball long enough, you'll see something that you've never seen before. Well, check out this double play from the Dayton Dragons game last night. Single A affiliate of the Reds. Off the pitcher, off the umpire, to the shortstop, to the first baseman. Take a look again. How do you score this one? One, blue, six, three. Double play, just like they drew it up. Never seen it before. And I'm not sure, Jim Day, when you're going to see that one again. That's incredible. Great video, great work by our crew. Per usual. Michael Lorenzen will take over on the mound here in the last of the seventh inning. Homer Bailey, six innings of three hit shutout baseball, walked only one batter. And struck out 11. His career high in a game 12 accomplished one time. One and one to Jeanette. Let's get one in the first, two in the third, a four run seventh to break it wide open. Producer of Reds Baseball, Josh Hall, our director, Roy Alfers. Associate producers Matt Sigafoos and Lauren White, along with our entire Milwaukee base crew. Great job as always. Always a, a really, really nice town to come visit Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hopefully the weather will be a little bit better next couple of days. Off the top of the middle of Suarez. That'll be a base hit. Now that's only the fourth hit of the night for the Milwaukee Brewers. They have really not hit the ball hard. They barely put the ball in play. Homer Bailey just really taking care, especially the top part of the lineup where he struck out the top two hitters in all of their six at bats. Second hit of the night for Jeanette. You know, one thing about this Brewers lineup, you know, they have a switch hitter in VR, they have a left handed hitter in Jeanette. And new in heights, but they're awfully right handed. Probably down the road, you know, they're in the rebuilding it's very much like the Reds. They're probably looking for some more left handed hitters to kind of make their offense a little bit more balanced. Well, the Brewers have. An extremely 
talented minor league system. It's considered well, by many to be among the very, very best in baseball. You know, the one thing you ask about the Reds when you start looking at rebuild is, you know, right now, Chris, where are the offensive players in the Reds organization? You know, we've been hearing about, you know, Kyle Waldrop and Jesse Winker and all these kind of guys. And, you know, they've had their ups and their downs. Winker, a nice bounce back here so far this year. But, you know, he's by no means considered a guy that's going to drive the ball out of the ballpark, at least not yet. That can change with guys once they get to the big leagues from time to time. Well, the, the other question you have to ask is where are they going to play? I mean, what players are going to be moved out of here? I mean, they traded Jay Bruce, but they haven't opened up a lot of positions for new players. I no. mean, Adam Duvall has settled in at left field very nicely, unless they've got someone who's going to push him out of there. Billy Hamilton is your center fielder. If they had a chance to trade Zach Cozart, they didn't take it. Advantage of it. He's here and he probably will be here next year. Unless they trade him over the winter. Suarez is probably not going anywhere. Phillips, at least for 2017, probably not going anywhere. And we know Votto's not going anywhere. So, or at least you wouldn't think. It's where the Reds have been. Really unable so far to go quote unquote all in on a true rebuild. Because you still have veteran players occupying positions at first, second, and short. All 30 plus years old. So so really why would you go all in on a rebuild rather than more of a retool? I I, I never really understand why teams want to just Bear it right down to the to the blank canvas and, and, and rebuild from the ground up when you already have a foundation out there. Major, good major league players are hard to come by. The key is to find those people who fit as pieces to the puzzle to make your team better, to give you better balance, to, to round out your bullpen, to give you some threats off the bench, to give you some players that can play multiple positions when you have an injury and you need to play a player in a prolonged period of time. That you have that player either accessible off the bench or in the minor leagues. Well, it's interesting you bring it up because I think anybody who follows the Reds regularly. Now, look, we're going we're to have some time to wait and see. And the, the level of competition as there is strike three to Perez for the second out of inning. You know, you, you've played teams above the 500 mark in the Pirates and the Cardinals on this trip, and then you're playing three teams in a row coming up that are very much in the hunt for the postseason on the upcoming homestand. Marlins. Dodgers Rangers mm -hmm. but I think everybody would agree the Reds since the All-Star break are 14 and 10 if they had the pitching staff the first two and a half months of the season that they have right now I'm not so sure their record would not be every bit as good as the Pittsburgh Pirates right I'm now you. I'm with you.
on the game summary. Reds had a 1-0 lead in the first inning. Went to 2-0 on the 27th home run of the year by Adam Duvall. Later that inning, after a big stolen base with two outs by Phillips, he would score on a two-out single by Suarez, making it 3-0. Reds got four in the seventh, but by that time, Homer Bailey just simply terrific here tonight. Oh, he was overpowering, not just terrific. He had every one of his pitches working. 11 strikeouts will testify to that. Never once really in any kind of trouble. And Craig Council is walking back to the dugout. He's going to take that tunnel right up into the manager's office and take a quick shower because he's been tossed out of this ball game. And we're not sure why it happened in between innings. He and Bill Miller got into it about something. Well, you could hear a lot of barking going on in that inning, especially the at bat to Chris Carter. When Miller had to yell back into the Brewers' dugout, I think they've been unhappy about the called strike zone tonight by Miller. Council ejected. Part of a double switch here. That ball out of play. Rob Scahill takes over on the mound. And now in center field, Flores will replace Neuenheim. Reds up 7 nothing as they bat here in the top of the eighth inning. Ozark on this his 31st birthday. An 0 for 5 night so far. He's had a lot more good nights and bad nights though. So far in this 2016 season that's for sure. Into center field, second hit of the night for Joey Votto. Third time he's been on base. A pair of singles, a walk, and a score two runs. Following our game here tonight and every game on Fox Sports Ohio. Stick around for Reds Live, brought to you by a performance, Kings Hunt. A perfect night. For Adam Duval. Hit by a pitch in the first. Solo home run in the third. Single to right in the fifth. Single to left, scored in the seventh.
two and two. talk a minute ago about you know, the Reds and where they might be and I'm not going to sit here and try and suggest that they'd be right there in the hunt for a playoff spot or anything like that we're just talking about a dramatic difference of what a team would look like that's 21 games under 500 right now if they win tonight and they're ahead seven nothing they would be 15 and 10 since the all-star break and really it's right around the break where they started to get guys back. Lorenzen, Iglesias in the bullpen, Di Sclafani, Bailey is part of the regular rotation. I'm not suggesting the Reds would go 15 and 10, you know, in every 25 game stretch. They wouldn't. But, you know, when you look at just the bullpen alone and the Earn run average of the bullpen at a 30 game time frame is it it's not a huge quote unquote sample size but it's still pretty good and when you go in 30 game increments of this Reds bullpen so far this year you throw in all the things about competition level blah 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 all those things even out but when you look at the the starters ERA almost five in April five and a half in May over five in June. It's trickled down the last two months, and the bullpen ERA is night and day. That one had a lot of English on it, and the base runner was standing right in front of Carter. I'm not sure he ever saw the ball until the very last second. You know, Chris, as you take a look at this here, the, but the, the ERA of the bullpen, April, 6-2, May 7-2, June almost 5, July and August under 3. Oh, you're right. I think part of the bullpen problems early in the year was the starting rotation problems. That they weren't covering enough innings, the bullpen gets exposed, and that's what happens. They were also running a lot of young men up out of the minor leagues that hadn't been big leagues before. We had a number of Major League debuts, and if they weren't debuts, they were nearly debuts. And you didn't have a, a lot of guys hitting there in the, in the months of April and May either. But this is not a team that if you're a contending team and really fighting for a spot for the playoff, this is not a good time to play the Reds. No. And I, the other thing I think that maybe what you're saying is that this ball club is a lot closer to being good than people gave it credit for back in in March when they were down in spring training we're talking about 100 losses and you know maybe it's going to take through 17 and maybe even eight 2018 I heard you know management say that stuff I couldn't believe it I'm like this team's not that bad and you've got some young players that are pretty good players that are going to come around a lot faster than maybe people thought they would it's ran to any of and lead seven nothing.
Time brought to you by Kroger. Stop by your neighborhood Kroger to save big store wide. Great food, low prices, Kroger. And buy Toyota for over 30 offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Find the MLS Soccer Sunday, sponsored by Audi. Continues for the Western Conference Clash. Seattle and Real Salt Lake. Sunday, 7 Eastern on FS1, or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Ross Ollendorf takes over on the mound for the Reds. Extraordinary 12 decisions in his 47 games. Man of action. Brought in. I, I don't know about you, Chris. I, I was stunned when Oldendorf was brought in that game the other night with the bases loaded. Yeah. Well, Brian Price really didn't have much else, no, nowhere else to turn. He had, you know, his two best relievers down there. You're talking about the implosion of the game when the Reds blew that huge lead in the ninth inning in St. Louis. Well, the day before, it was on a Monday night, and the day before, Rysel Iglesias pitched one inning in Pittsburgh and threw 32 pitches. And he's been having kind of a, you know, a, an arm they want to take care of. So you weren't going to run him out there again. Lorenzen, I think, had pitched two innings, and he wasn't available. And when Tony Sincroni was on the, and Blake Wood had already pitched. So when Sincroni, you know, started to give it up, he had nowhere else to turn. Well, you know, it, it, the way Jumbo I Jumbo had already pitched? Yeah, the, the, the only way that I saw it, and, and again, I look, Brian Price has forgotten more baseball than I know. And you and I have talked about this a lot as there's a fly ball to center field. The Reds are trying to win games. They have not gone in, despite the fact that we're told over and over again that this is a rebuild. Right now, they are playing players that are veteran major league players by and large, and they're trying to win games. They're not bringing up young guys to take the place of some guys that might be around another year. You know, the Peraza Phillips debate, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, when I saw that the other night, I thought, okay. If you're in a rebuild, here's a chance to maybe learn something about a guy like Josh Smith. You know, you're in August. You're 25 games out of first place. And maybe Ollendorf will be here for the long haul as a veteran guy down in your bullpen. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've really never seen Smith, who has really done a nice job since he's kind of found in this little you know role of his down in that bullpen he didn't pitch regularly he's a long guy down there and maybe they were holding on to him for the next day or two in case something got out of line which is certainly reasonable to expect that's all I meant by it. not that you know he wasn't a good choice to bring into the game it, it's a beautiful thing about baseball when you can look back sure. or even while you're watching it saying well I wouldn't make this move now in football I, I couldn't say well I think they should have run there instead of passed I mean well, everybody you know, does it. Yeah. yeah but I mean in, in baseball it's you know it's more conversational mm -hmm. you can talk about it and you know as, as long as you say it at the time I think that no one ever accuses you of, of second guessing I mean, managers have been used to that ever since they've become managers. Sure. And the managers that, that get uptight and worry about it, which Brian doesn't, are the managers that aren't going to be around for very long because it's going to go on in every city on sports talk radio. But I think the one point that you make, Tom, is interesting and, and is that, you know, the organization says they're rebuilding, but the clubhouse doesn't believe that. When they take the field every night, 
They believe and they're trying to win that game that night. Sure. So they don't have the big picture in mind. They're not thinking about, you know, future draft picks or who's going to be available in the free agent market or who they may or may not trade. They want to win tonight. And that's what that's the way Brian Price has managed every one of his games this year. Straight away center field hit a long way by Flores. His first at bat since coming in. He homers the straight away center field. Provided the elevation. The Brewers get their first run of the game as Flores goes right out the front door. Top of the order now for the Brewers. The first three hitters in the lineup. Combined 0 for 9 with seven strikeouts. The first two hitters in the lineup are 0 for 6, six strikeouts. All of those against Homer Bailey, who fanned 11 if you're just joining us. In six innings of three hit shutout baseball tonight. There's another strike out of the yard. So the golden sombrero for VR, he fans four times. Cheer on the Red Legs, they take on the Dodgers. Four game series. <laughs> and thanks to Reach Magazine, you can catch all the action and save with the four for $48 ticket offer. Four view level tickets, four Reds hats, only $48. Come on down. Look forward to seeing the Dodgers and the Marlins along with the Rangers coming in starting Monday night. Did I say Robinson Cano or did I say Robinson Crusoe? You said Cano. Well, let's see if um, Olendorf can make it back to back K's here and make it back to back. Hitters that strike out four times in this game. Are there enough sombreros to go around? I think you and Jim Kelch wore one earlier <laughs> on Cinco de Mayo. They're going back into the vault. <laughs> After the uproar that caused. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, this day and age. Oh boy. People gotta find something else to worry about, man. Life's too short. <laughs> two two pitch. A rocket. That was a short hop pickup. Nice play by Suarez. Brewers get on the board. We go to the ninth. Seven one red.
show you need for that day's game with Reds Live, presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. These two teams back at it tomorrow with Reds Live starting at 6.30 right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Stream it live on Fox Sports Go. Tomorrow, Dan Straley, Zach Davies teed up against each other. Straley 7-6, and six. Zach Davies looking for win number 10. That game coming to you, Reds Live at 6.30 and the game a half an hour later and worth tuning into. Reds look like they're going to hold on to hold on this first game of three as they lead 7-1. Cahill still on the mound as we go to the top of the ninth inning. It'll be a Eugenio Suarez and Tucker Barnhart on deck. Jake Elmore now taking over out in left field for the Brewers. Suarez behind 0-2. Reds will have the opportunity going into tomorrow's game to make it a 500 road trip so far. You may remember the last time they went on the road for San Francisco and San Diego. That was a winning trip. The first winning trip is that strike three to Suarez of longer than just one series where the Reds had a winning road trip. This is the fourth of the Reds five road trips of at least 10 days this season. And boy uh, Chris you brought it up before the game uh, you, you guys have been true road warriors. It's a stretch of 15 out of 18 where the Reds have been away from Great American Ballpark. That will swing the other way starting Monday night. Well, you know, this is the, the the month that can really wear a team down. If you're in contention now, a lot of times your bullpen has begun to get really the signs of being overworked all year long. But you have help on the horizon. You've got expanded rosters come September 1st. And you're hoping that, you know, you bring some guys up and they can give you relief a little bit of relief. But this is always a very trying month for baseball. It's normally a month in which you play the maximum number of games in a row before a day off. You get right up there around 20 games. Dog days of summer. Well, we mentioned all three teams though that will be coming in. I mean they're playing for something now. And the Marlins right now have the second best record in the wild card chase. So the Dodgers would be number one. The Marlins right now would be the second wild card. Round ball to VR. Dodgers come in after that. They're a game behind the Giants in the NL West. And then the Rangers, leaders of the American League West, our Volkswagen drive of the game. Number 27 of the year for Duval that came in the third. Tyler Holt batting for Olin Dorth. Ross goes in and gives up a run. Looks like Kiva Sampson, I believe, getting loose out there in the Reds bullpen. Yep. Well, 
Looking bad roller. And a 1 2 3 inning for Scahill. Brewers bat last of the night. Reds three outs away from a 7 1 win. By Miller Light, the strikeout working tonight, Mr. Welsh, for one homer. Bailey struck out 11 in six innings tonight. Yeah, he took care of the top of the order. You mentioned it earlier. They have been up six times. He has struck them out each of those six times up. So Homer Bailey just completely in control. Had, well, like Brian Price said about his first outing in San Diego, electric stuff. And I think the same thing could to use to describe his performance tonight. It'll be Kiva Sampson in in a 7-1 ball game to wrap it up here in the ninth inning. No, Jim Day will uh, certainly be uh, getting together with Homer Bailey after the game. And we'll bring you some of that on Reds Live. And we'll be down in the Reds clubhouse. Hopefully right quick. Jake Elmore will bat to begin the Milwaukee ninth. Red seven, Brewers one. Seven runs, 12 hits, 11 left on base. The Reds without an error. One run, five hits, two errors, and four stranded for the Brew Crew, 2 0. Oh. Right and Votto, one out. You know, the glass half empty view of this series. And look, there's a little bit of cynic in all of us. Uh, you know, you got two teams dragging up the bottom of the National League Central Division, and that's an accurate statement. Having said that, Chris, anyone who's ever played on any team, I don't care if it's girls' soccer or men's basketball or you pick whatever it is. No one wants to finish last. I mean, the Reds would love to get hot and try to find a way to move up a lot more than just fourth place. Unless but you they, get a lottery pick. Well, yeah, there's probably something to that. But, I mean, they, they don't want to finish dead last in this National League Central. No one does in anything they Agreed. do. Agreed. So, you know, it may not seem like a big deal to most people out there, but certainly for the guys in the gray uniforms, you know, they pick up a game on Milwaukee here tonight. And a chance for a couple of more the next two days. Well, I think there's two ways to look at it. One is a team way like that, and you you, you, you want to be on winning teams, you, and you want to win every day because it it makes your life better around the 24 guys that are that you have to travel with every day, and plus the coaches, plus the trainers. It just everything is better when you win, even if it's in small dosages. The other part of it, though, is if 
you know, depending on what your contract status is, you might be playing for a contract next year. Or you might be playing in front of some scouts that haven't seen you. And they're going to write a report on you tonight. And depending on how you look out there, they're gonna, it's going to be a good one or a bad one. So I think you have a lot of different motivations going on, even if you're with the last place team late in the year. Hot smash off the glove of Kozart in the left field. Janetta Boy with one out in the ninth. This is only the second game that Kiva Sampson has pitched on this road trip. He retired all six batters he faced in his only appearance since a start you may remember he made against Arizona all the way back on the 23rd of July he's pitched two innings since July the 23rd that was a good start he had against Arizona mm -hmm. Actually, if you look back to the All-Star break with Kiva Sampson, he, he's pitched three times since the break. Once against Milwaukee in a 9-0, nine 9-1 -to -to loss. He came in and pitched very well in that game, four innings. Pitched that start, as you mentioned, that four and third innings against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And that was a Reds win, pitched against Pittsburgh a couple of innings. And that has been it. Hardest thing, and I was talking to him about this the other day, and I got because I've been through it where you sit long, if you're a long man in the bullpen, you sit long periods of time. I mean, how do you stay sharp and strong at the same time? You want to get enough throwing in that you keep your breaking pitches sharp and you keep your command under control. But at the same time, if you get too much throwing in one particular night, that will be the night, no doubt, that the starter's going to get knocked out in the second inning and they're going to call you in to cover four or five innings. So you walk that fine line every day. There goes Mac Jenkins. Britain off that mound now. He took his time to get out there, but he's booking it on the way back to the dugout. So the message delivered to Kivas. Hernan Perez about it. One of three looks at a strike. Now they were evidently. Barking at the home plate umpire a lot tonight. Bill Miller's the home plate umpire, and I think that may have precipitated the ejection of the, Bre the Brewers manager, Craig Council, a couple of innings ago. Breaking ball away, two and one. Well, believe it or not, the Reds are warming up their closer right now. Marcelo Iglesias is not just tossing down there. I mean, he's throwing as if he is ready to get into a ball game here. Hey. 
Maybe that was a message that Hack Jenkins delivered to Kiva Sampson. Don't make me bring that guy in, please. And he follows the visit to the mound with a strikeout. So the Brewers are down to their final out of the night. First strikeout for Sampson. Game knocking on the door at three hours and 20 minutes. 7 1 here in the last of the ninth inning. Right away center field and a long way, and just like that, it is a three run game. And a save situation for Rysel Iglesias. Run by Manny Pena. He is a backup catcher, and we didn't get to see him start tonight, but some scouts have told me that they really like this young man, especially the way he swings the bat. And I can see why. Well, that's going to be it for Samson, so. In a save situation with one out to go, Brian Price with a three-run lead is going to bring on his closer. So Ollendorf gives up a bomb in the eighth. Sampson gives up three in the ninth. And we'll take a break in the action. Our skyline shall be called to the bullpen. Dean Glacius trying to nail it down. When he picked up a save, Chris, he said, you know, that's what I want to do. I mean, if his arm, and we don't know this, if it's not going to allow him perhaps to be a starter again, and that's, you know, jury's out. This is what he wants to do. Well, does he mean that's what he wants to do this year? Or Good does that question. mean that's what he wants to do in the future? Quickly ahead, two strikes on Martin Maldonado. And a check swing. The at bat's still alive.
This was a seven nothing game. An inning and a half ago now seven four and the Reds have to bring in their closer. The Glacius to try and notch the final out. Got his first major league save on Tuesday in the win over the Cardinals. The fifth Reds pitcher to start opening day and report a save in that same season. You saw the list a moment ago. That's in the year to left, and this ought to do it. And the Reds win the opener 7 4 the final. Brewers get three in the ninth, but Homer Bailey, the winner, 11 strikeouts of three hits, shutout baseball over his six innings of work. Duval, a big night. The Reds, a big night. Save number two for Iglesias. Well, a solid night, really, from the very beginning for Homer Bailey. Set the pace of this ball game. They continued the misery of Jimmy Nelson, and you know you want to win a series. Nice to win that first game. Reds live post game version coming up. Reds win seven.